Good evening, everybody. I think we <clears throat> it's a good time to start. Uh, we waited a few minutes for people to join. Um, but let's get going with the topic of tonight. I think, Victor, do you want to share a few words? Absolutely. It's great to be back here. You hear me OK there, Raf? Yeah, very well. OK. Well, it's great to be back here with Barcelona Metropolitan. As you know, we're always thrilled to be able to provide uh, some value added uh, support and things that are very near and dear to the heart of the English speaking community in Barcelona and across Spain. And it's, uh, it's, oh, it's fantastic having these series with Inspire because you give tremendous value to people in a very sensitive area of their lives, which is buying their home and making you know, a great home their dreams. There's so many different pitfalls and between the must know tips before buying your home uh, the buying process in Spain, the mortgage, and then tonight, you know, adding value through understanding some of the property dilemmas. Some of these questions sometimes seem obvious, but, you know, when you're facing a small decision, these are not small. They usually, they are accompanied by big money numbers, and uh, we are very pleased to have you with us in your expertise, the so years of expertise uh, in the property areas. And, well, we just want to welcome everybody to Inspire and to Barcelona Metropolitan. And Raf has just given tremendous amount of information, very practical and applicable tips. And I uh, just look forward to learning more tonight and inviting you guys back to learn more with Inspire, the property experts in Barcelona. Thanks for the introduction, Victor. And welcome again, everyone. I think a few more people joined us to the to this session of tonight. We talk about buyer dilemmas. Uh, for those who don't know me, um, I'm originally from Belgium, a long time Barcelona resident, nearly nearly 20 years now. Um, and our focus is really, my day-to-day -day job is really uh, about helping people take better buy decisions regarding properties in Spain, in Barcelona, also outside Barcelona, other parts of Spain, uh, making sure that people make the right decision, that they don't make mistakes, that people in the sector, or agencies or sellers don't abuse the fact that you might be foreign buyers, maybe first time or, or young buyers, um, that everything is perfect, that we can give guarantees before you sign, before you commit on a on a purchase, negotiate the best possible price. So that's for those who have been thinking of buying, that is quite different from what a real estate agency does. Agencies sell properties, okay? We help people buy properties. That's very different. We don't run an own, portf own, own we don't have an own portfolio of, of, uh, of properties and we don't want that on purpose because then we, then we can't be independent. Uh, and give proper independent advice to, to our buyers. I teach about this topic at University in Barcelona at Real Estate Master. Um, the City Council of Barcelona asks me every year to run sessions for, for the expat community on, on, on property. Um, so you find you find more information if you want to on, on my LinkedIn profile or, or blog. So uh, before talking about the, dile the dilemmas, very briefly, a few things that are really critical about a, to know about a property, property market. Uh, things that you need to understand the framework, how it works in Spain, how it does not work in Spain um, when you take decisions. To so see things into context, to be able to evaluate uh, purchases or maybe sales in, 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 from the right perspective and avoid, avoid mistakes. Mm -hmm. Um, then we talk about the dilemmas, and obviously this is your webinar. We do this for you, so please use the chat box as a chat function at the bottom of your screen somewhere, and you can put your questions in there. We will monitor them, and at the end I'll take time to uh, to answer hopefully all of the questions. It should work. We run from 8 to 9 p.m. tonight. If there's more questions, I'm happy to keep going, but I will try to cover everything we, we want to cover today and most of the questions by, by 9 o'clock, okay? Good. So the dilemmas we're going to talk about, uh, there's a lot of dilemmas when you buy a property. And here is just a few examples. But there's a lot of very important choices that have very important implications. And sometimes you can't reverse your decision. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about some. We'll raise, we launch a poll on the screen now, and you can indicate the ones that you would like to learn most about. It's a multiple choice uh, answer. So just click, cl select the topics that you would like me to talk about, and that will help me prioritize the list, prioritize the timing, the examples, etc. Okay, so. You should see now a pop-up message on your screen. 
please. Okay, I see responses coming in. That's very good. I will share some results in when we have some more. When we have some more, okay. Half of the people have voted, voted or have given their choice. Let's wait a little bit. So so far, most people, the big majority, is interested. Know if it's. Uh, buy now or wait i don't know if that's because of the first topic or because it's <laughs> um i put it on top of the list because that's from my, from my experience about what everybody's asking me today or everyone's asking me since probably june when the market op opened up again after after COVID. if anyone wants to select any more topics please do so a few more seconds otherwise we close the poll so let me just take a few notes here just writing down the results. We can finalize the voting now. Just so you, I think you can see the results now as well. Uh, what you and your co-participants have voted for. Um, okay. So buy now or wait is the number one topic, then taking a mortgage yes or no is second together with a property to, it is a bit surprising, but it's very interesting. Ready to move in or to renovate, very good. Um, keep renting or buying. Yeah, we talk about that for sure. Uh, city or coast. Okay, it's a fairly short answer, I think, but we cover that. Okay, good. Okay, so let's move forward. Okay, let's try to close this. Okay. Five key things about how the property market works in Spain, because you need to understand this when you're thinking of buying a property. Um, it's probably different from your home country. And in Spain, I think the number one thing to remember is that the market is not regulated or nearly not regulated and anyone can sell properties. You don't need training, you don't need a license, you don't need to register in most parts of Spain to sell properties. In some parts of Spain, like Catalonia, the owner of an agency has to register the people that work in the agency don't need any training. Um, you also, those people who have, who have visited properties, who have talked to agencies, you might have had very different experience depending on the agency in terms of how knowledgeable, how uh, how good your that salesperson is, okay? But it's very important anyone can sell it. Because there's no regulation, there's also no liability for the seller. Uh, um, it means if you don't ask for certain information, that they don't have to give you that information. Or even if they give you wrong information about the property, uh, you can't do anything about, about it. Um, the agency work for the work, they work for the seller, that's your counterparty as a buyer. And what does it mean? They're paid by the seller. So they, they defend the interest of the seller. That's logic. Mm -hmm. Now, Maybe in your home country, the, the notary might, is maybe running the due diligence, preparing the contract to so everything. That's not the case in Spain. You will see the notary, the last one, one and a half hour of maybe a four or five, six month journey of searching, evaluating, buying a property. So you've got to do it yourself. At the same time in Spain, there is a lot of demand for good properties. They sell quickly, but there's no transparent system, not a, no single source of information. You can't just find everything you need to take a decision to buy or not to buy or to negotiate, how much to negotiate. So that's a conflict because you need quick decisions. That's where we, that's also for us, one of the areas with a lot of stress. When we get to this point, we want that property to help it secure and make sure we can take all the boxes before something is put on paper. Mm -hmm. And today, and that's, that's because of the economic situation in Spain, we see a lot more than before, bad properties, problematic, properties presented as bargains, choyos in Spanish. And it's mainly because of a low price. They, the sellers need cash. They try and just get it on the market, very attractive price. And some people um, think that everything that shines is gold and they think oh, this is a great property. And it's often, very often, significant problems with it. But that's also our job to make sure that we 
re represent you as a buyer and, and help you throughout the process. It is a buyer's market, a very clear buyer's market because of COVID, because of the economic recession, because of the increased unemployment and so on and so forth. Um, it creates opportunities, but also new risks. So it's uh, you've got to be careful on the markets, but you, uh, if today you pay the same price for a property as what you have paid eight months ago, then you're making a bad decision probably, okay? In most cases, there are exceptions, but it's important to understand. This sentiment around, or sentiment sentiment and, and reality about the, the buyer's market is, is reflected in the media. When, when you read it, um, local or the national media, it's not just for Spain, but Spain is, is a market which where the property prices are affected heavier than in many other countries. Um, and we see here, uh, I think that, that's from interviews that the media often ask me for, for my opinion, because I, as an economist, I tend to give my honest view on things, not to camuflate, camuflate um, uh, opinions, um, and they seem to like that. I make predictions, I, I, I say what I think, and that's what, what I also do with our, with our customers. So there's a bias market, opportunity for financing your purchase, but also La Vanguardia also said, after talking uh, with us for, for a long time, they said, proper expert advice is more important than ever today because of what we've just discussed before. Um, because today we don't have time for, to cover everything, we talk about the dilemmas. If you have, because anyone on this call is probably in a different stage. Um, we have people that after, after webinars contact us and they say, I found a property, I made a reservation. Can you help me secure it now with the legal party, RS contract, the notary, et cetera. And you've got other people that say, I'm thinking of making an investment. I have savings. I'm not sure how to go about it, Take, taking a mortgage, yes or no. I don't know which areas I, would, I should go for. So we need to start with, with a very early on strategy workshop. All these topics are covered in different webinars. There's one about the impact of COVID on the markets, more of a macroeconomic view on what I think prices will do. The second episode from October was on the buying process. So the different steps we go through, when you need a lawyer, when you need to do technical checks, when you sign documents, what you should not sign, when you should wait and push back before committing, etc. Number three was on mortgages, that was last month. Um, uh, and there, there's more than in Spanish and in Dutch as well. There's another one from the city council where, where I talk about renting and buying. So they're all on the block. Uh, we can share the link of, of the block in, in the chat function here. So feel free to, they're till the end of the year accessible for free. It's no cost, you can watch them for free and share them for free. Before we start, we don't just run webinars about the market. We actually work with people like yourself to help them buy properties, help them take the right decisions, de-risk the whole uh, transaction. Um, it's people who buy a place to live, it's people who buy a place to rent out, an investment. There's people who dream of a second residence in Spain, Piater. Um, there's people from Barcelona who want to buy now uh, a house on the, in the countryside, in Montseigne or on the coast. Other people are at a different stage of their life cycle and they, or property life cycle, they want to sell or de-invest maybe. Other people need renovation support. Um, uh, someone said us recently, okay, yeah, but you, you work with very rich buyers. Uh, that's not true. Let, let's be very clear. Uh, we work with a lot of young people, people between 28, 35 is a big group of our buyers. Buyers go up to, let's say, 50, 55 years old. We group properties from the main property between 200 and a million and a half. Uh, 200 and 500 is 80% of, of, of the purchases we, we accompany um, with a lot of lot younger buyers as well. I've got examples, which I'm not going to talk about now, from different clients who, after the previous webinars, uh, reached out to us. And in the meanwhile, they're on their path to become an owner or they are owners already, but they have very different challenges. So if there is time, I'm happy to come back to this at the end. You see the numbers are their age on the left column. Okay. Um, but to give you an example, today we we had a, a an, an American uh, young professional, 36 years old, uh, living in living in Barcelona, start, started to look for a property today. We signed the others contract. Yesterday we signed a property a, a purchase outside Barcelona for other buyers. Last week, Friday, an attico in Poblenau, the dream of other people. So everyone is at different stages, notary, reservation, negotiation. So dilemmas. Um, and if, if you have questions that are not covered here, or if you some people are, and I understand that, 
the situation might be very specific. Uh, some people receive an inheritance or are getting through a divorce and therefore want to buy another property or, or just you, you don't want to be speaking in public in a webinar about, about your situation. Uh, my email is at the bottom there. Just write to me. There's no cost involved for a first conversation. So happy to do it. Buy now or wait. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen because we don't need to have this uh, all the time here. Sorry. Okay. Do you still see me? Okay, should be good. So buy, buy now or wait. What What's important from my point of view that that you should know what what is my opinion on on this on this dilemma uh, we've mentioned there's a clear buyer's market buyer's market means that the buyer is in control that you have more power than the seller that's different from a situation a few years ago that's different from what happened between 2013 all the way through to 2017 18 when there was a clear seller's market. They were in control, prices were going up, etc. We see today in the market clear price drops. So meaning you buy a property with a significant discount, a larger discount than what we than what was possible before uh, before March. At the same time, um, also today the interest rates are at the historic lowest ever point. Uh, for mortgages in, in Spain, which means that not only the property itself, but also the cost of buying it, the, the, the interest rate, which is the cost of money, basically, uh, has, has, is lower. And that makes it for a lot of people very attractive to buy in, in today's market. Um, I don't expect, and but I, sp I speak every day to, to senior in industry professionals from from banks, from at, at university, from developers, from large building companies, from agencies, from fran franchises, a lot of people in the sector, um, we don't see any indication that prices will go up in the next months in Spain. Uh, probably even not in the next six months and potentially not in the next year. Um, the reason is the economic situation. The property market follows the economic uh, health of, um, of a country. Uh, Spain is affected very hard by the recession. Uh, the economy will shrink this year by 11, 12 percent probably. That drop in GDP this year is larger than the entire drop that the economy suffered in Spain in the previous crisis between 2008 and 2013. Mm -hmm. Over these over these six years, um, the, the, the economy dro dropped less than 10 percent, and now we are 11, 12 percent potentially. So that that's a that's a big difference. That's a reason why. Um, we don't think that that there will be that there will be any any price. That's one of the reasons why we don't expect price increases. Um, pr price decreases for many people are from Barcelona on the call here. I think um, eight ten percent is feasible, but you also find today properties at much better locations for a certain budget, which was not possible in the past. In the past, you had to go further away from the center to find lower lower properties or, or larger discounts. That's not the case anymore. At the same time, if you're looking at for properties at the coast, and I saw some people uh, in the registration form is that they look at for properties outside Barcelona, at least outside Barcelona, um, price drops might be larger uh, and might might be 10% uh, plus. And I'm not surprised if we see, if we see properties with uh, 15, 20% discounts, they will be maybe a bit the exception, but they will Occur. We see them already on the market. Uh, don't start dreaming if you want to buy in Sitges, in Gavaman, in Casalefeld, this won't happen because it's a, it's a place with limited supply, very high demand, expat demand from people with, with uh, uh, high available incomes. So, uh, but th there is a lot of opportunity if, if you're thinking of buying. So do you need to wait? Um, I think no. You got to. You don't need to rush. There's a difference between waiting and and not rushing. What you got to do, I think, is what I re recommend our customers is you got to prepare very well now, so you're ready to buy when the opportunity pops up. Okay. Um, 
if you're not convinced of the opportunity, you should wait. Mm -hmm. Then there will be another opportunity. But if you're not prepared, you won't be able to buy a good opportunity. Preparation means knowing, that's what we, that's what we do in these initial workshops. Um, with my budget, what, what type of property can I buy in what areas, what property features and so on? Uh, what is possible. To know that you need to also have sorted your financials. You need to speak to the bank and know, do I pay cash or with a mortgage? But what is my total available budget for this? Do the numbers, know how you will finance. Um, we run workshops where we talk a lot about preferences and creating realistic expectations with buyers. Because if, 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 you're, if that's not realistic, um, you will see a great property and you probably can't buy it because you're not ready to buy. There is some things missing. There's an approval from the bank missing maybe and you will doubt or I would at least recommend you probably not to commit, not to sign an RS contract. If you're not sure the bank is backing you with a mortgage, you can lose your 10%. You can lose your 30, 40, 60,000 euro that you pay with an, with an, with an, uh, when you commit to buy the property in, in RS. So preparation is key. Don't need to rush, be ready for, for opportunities. Uh, consider consider mortgages, I think, um, but you got to be careful as well because the good properties sell quickly. There is bad properties as presented as bargains on the market. You got to differentiate them, but also um, I, I think that 25%, one one out of four um, selling agencies will disappear in the next year, maybe not next six months already, uh, and that's because there, there will be less transactions on the market. Uh, they will have less business and some agencies are small anyway, have high costs. So you've got to be careful with who you uh, do business. Imagine you make a, a commitment to buy a property, you pay a reservation amount of 3,000 euro or an ARAS amount of, of maybe 30,000 euro to an agency, which sometimes is okay. But if that agency runs out of business, you have major problems. You've got to be careful with um, how we how we structure the, how we manage the risk in, in this in this process. If you wait, will prices drop more? And then move on to the next topic. Um, I think we will see, so we see price drops already now. I wrote an article about it on Metropolitan Barcelona. It's, it's on their website. Uh, we, we can share the link here as well in the chat box where I talk about the price paradox. There's a big difference between asking prices, which is the prices listed on Idealista, Fotocasa, the listing platforms, and deal prices. Um, that gap has widened. And it's, and it's not the asking price that's coming down, it's the deal price that's going down at the moment. The asking price, I think, will go down in the near future, in the next months, when more and more people start to realize that they can't sell the property at that price. I talk a lot about that in, in very now one or two, about why that is happening. I talk about it in, in the article as well. So have, have a look at it. Uh, so we, we will see more properties drop the asking price going forward, but it doesn't mean that the deal price will also keep dropping because it dropped already now. The big difference with the previous crisis and big difference with the normal situation on the property market in, 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 in Spain is that today the price discount is not depending on how good your property is, on which in which area it's located, it depends on the urgency the seller has to sell the property, the urgency for cash, for liquidity of the seller. And if you find those deals, we often find off-market deals, so we're not non-listed non properties. Um, that's often where a significant significant uh, uh, discounts can be achieved, and and still having both parties happy at the table because one wants cash quickly, another one says, "I'm happy for that, but I need a I need a discount." So prepare, but don't rush. No need to go quickly, but uh, you prepare, start monitoring the market. That's, that's my advice. Because when everyone else starts selling, uh, when the market picks up, buyers are, there's a lot of people waiting to buy, ready to buy, they're looking as well. So when, when there's more prices dropping, the demand will also react very quickly, local and international demands. So, um, if more questions at the end, uh, please just share them um, um, at the end of the, or, or in the chat box, all right? Next one was um, buying cash or with a mortgage. A lot of people, half of the people is interested in this topic. This is very important. This is about your money that you've worked for. Uh, listen to webinar number three. It's about mortgages. I go in a lot of detail. I make comparisons. I talk about, um, a lot of examples there, tangible examples. Um, 
I will, when you come to me and say, I've got, we, we, so here's an example with John. John is uh, an entrepreneur. He's not from Barcelona, from Spain, but he lives here, he runs his business here. And he says, I've got half a million savings on my bank account, which I can use for property purchase. I want an Etico with a terrace, mm -hmm. a lifestyle property. He's single, that's his dream. Fine, it's good. So instead of just uh, starting to search for these right Atticos that, that uh, meet his criteria, we first had this financial discussion. And in the end, he said like, yeah, you're right. I, I should look at financing this, this purchase, part of the purchase at least. Um, it gives him, because we said the interest rate is at the historic lowest point ever. Um, and what is the advantage? That you don't have to decapitalize. So you, you keep a buffer, a savings buffer. And I think today in uncertain times, um, I think you agree that, uh, I hope you agree that there's more uncertainty today than maybe a few years ago. Um, it's not a bad thing to have some additional buffer on your bank account. For example, with, with John, what we're looking at now is using about 260,000 out of the half a million as a down payment that he will make for the property as, as he own funds he injects into the transaction and the rest plus the taxes will be financed by the bank. Mm -hmm. I think, so he keeps a lot of savings on his bank account. He's protected. So he, if he wants to do other investments, that, that's also not an, an important opportunity. So he might now buy the place to live. And he could even buy with another 100K and a bit of financing, maybe a small investment property in, in Barcelona as well. So that, that gives you flexibility on the financials. The cost of that is very low. Uh, for roughly for every 100,000 euro that the bank gives you. So if you have... 100,000 euro, and you ask another 100,000 from the bank, as easy example, that will cost you around 1,200, 1,300 euro in year one, in terms of interest, 1.2, 1.3% .1 fix. And every year that number goes down, the cost of the interest of, of, the, of the loan goes down because you pay money back. Mm -hmm. Again, in, in episode three, there's a lot of examples about that. That is not a high cost. Uh, for a bit more than a thousand euro, you get a hundred thousand from the bank, which means you put less own money in, you keep a buffer, you have options with that uh, potential to do something else with that money, of course, a buffer or, or other investments. Um, so, and, and if you rent out a property for the people who are thinking of that, that number, when, when you buy a rental property in Barcelona, normally with two months of rent, maybe three months of rental income for some properties, you have sufficient to pay your mortgage interests back for an entire year. Mm -hmm. That means you have nine, maybe 10 months of rental income after having paid back the mortgage. So that is that is a um, uh, significant, significant example here. Um, what else on I'm thinking what else on this on this topic might be relevant um, when, when you think about mortgaging look at it in Spain but also in your home country there might be we're working with uh, with Ian he Ian owns an apartment in London he works in London um, his apartment is worth about 600,000 pounds uh, with a small mortgage on it so we're looking if we can refinance on that apartment in London instead of taking a property in Barcelona and you come to, to Barcelona as a cash buyer you don't need a, a mortgage here and sometimes quite often the cost rate costs related to that are lower in your home country than in in Barcelona you got to be careful with the banks because the banks say and we see it every single week the banks tell candidate buyers they say your mortgage is pre-approved. That's a very loose commitment from banks. Um, we had massive stress in a transaction for of a Canadian buyer who saw after the previous webinar, he came to us and said, I've seen my duplex at in Pobla now, um, a very expensive property, uh, beautiful. He made a reservation on it already. The bank said, you're pre-approved from, from the mortgages point of view. The first thing we look at together is the mortgage conditions, then we have to see the property. And I said, are you sure about this, that this mortgage is approved? And he said, yeah, they, they said it's, it's approved. We talked to the bank. I insisted on him that he should ask certain questions to the bank. And then the bank came back and said, actually, we can't guarantee that we finance your purchase. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the reservation contract was expiring. And there was one day left. 
you can't find a mortgage in one day, of course. It was very, very complicated to renegotiate with the owners the terms, the duration of the reservation commitment, extend the reservation commitments. Um, but there was the worry that the buyer would never buy. Work on plan B with plans B with different banks. So caution. We've seen it with 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 different customers and with different banks. Um, I can tell you uh, in, offline in more detail if you want to what, what is important to ask, what how to be sure. You've got to be sure before you commit in an RS contract, before you pay 10%, that you, you know the bank is, is backing you. Mm -hmm. And some of these online banks, it's more complicated because you don't talk to people. You talk to, well, you, there's, there's, there's an, an, an IT interface, a web interface, and then sometimes you talk, talk with someone from a help desk, but they are, they are uh, service agents. They are not mortgage experts in many cases. Okay. Final point, if you, um, mortgage has a cost, of course, but these costs, it's not just the interest rate. You've got to look at these costs as well. But even then, uh, I encourage you to look at the simulations. The only way to know what is possible is to speak to different banks, because all the banks are different and they do it on purpose. It's very frustrating for most people uh, to deal with Spanish banks, because they're not responsive, they don't care about service. Uh, they charge very high cost. They don't speak English in many cases. And I say this, but that's what we did a, a little bit of research among international buyers. That's what you or people like yourself told us um, in November. Any questions on this topic? Let's uh, let's uh, drop them in the in the chat function for later. And then I'm, which was the next one on the. Um, the list ready to move to move in or renovate uh it's one of my favorites uh for those who who know inspire you might know that inspire we started the company as an investment company in property we bought apartments we renovated them and then we would either sell them or rent them again um, afterwards we started offering the buying service or the buying support as a service to to our customers not just for investments also for people to to buy their, their main residence of course um but we are still doing a lot of renovation there's three dimensions from my point of view um three dimensions related to buying something that's ready to move in or uh, something that needs renovation a financial dimension not really the numbers is is it better cheaper there's a timing dimension too um, and there's the potential hassle dimension. Uh, obviously, you need a lot more decisions, a lot more patience, a lot more. Uh, you will have to deal with with a lot of people in the renovation. You can outsource it, but you will need to to work with companies that you might know or not know. So the, these things are 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 not always easy. Um, financially speaking, if you buy the right, and that's a condition, if you buy the right property. I'm a big believer in buying a property to renovate because financially you will buy cheaper. The cost of buying the property plus the purchase tax plus the renovation plus the VAT renovation and other costs. And maybe even you can, if you rented the property out, if you re reduce even or de deduct even later four or five, six months of rental income, um, even then, if you if it's the right property at a good price, you will financially have a benefit it's not a massive benefit i think on on properties of three three four hundred thousand euro two three four hundred thousand euro i don't think you will you will say maybe ten fifteen thousand euros may, maybe more eh? but it just as average numbers um but again it's not always good there is properties when when you see them that they don't have enough potential for innovation structurally they are complicated there is too many uh, structural walls that you can't easily remove you need approval from your neighbors uh, you need to spot these things early on before you would move ahead with such a property because otherwise it becomes complicated uh, frustrating and probably expensive and maybe you can never create the property you want uh, that's a financial part uh, of course um the big benefit is that uh, or at least a lot of people say that, and, and, and we see that when we work with the buyers, you can create, you can adapt the property to your preferences. And that is very important. If you buy a place to live or to rent it out, you, you want to maybe make that kitchen open, integrated in the living room, or a lot of apartments have very small bedrooms in Barcelona, maybe the, the, the third bedroom. Why don't we remove it and make it... Um, make the second bedroom large or make it a study, whatever, or change the bathroom in the kitchen from orientation. That, that is very, very 
uh, powerful again if the property is is the right one um, financially what you also need is when you buy to renovate you um, you the renovation you will have to pay with your own money not many banks finance renovation costs you can get it done but it's very complicated and you need to work with contractors that they like and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it um, or not recommend it at least so you, you need to buffer for that in the in the in, in, in the upfront financial planning it is true that um, you you can minimize a lot of your own fund for the purchase so we see people buying properties of to 250,000 euro and you can buy that with 50, 60,000 euro of savings. And then if you have, let's say 90,000 euro of savings, uh, then you still have 30 left, 40 left for renovation and not all renovations are expensive. Sometimes just changing bathroom, kitchen and maybe the floor and painting, you have a fantastic new property. Um, in other cases, you will need a lot more, a lot more. Uh, there's very beautiful examples. Um, on, on our Facebook and Instagram, where we, we are at the moment involved in three renovation projects for international buyers in Barcelona. Um, don't be afraid of it. Some people say, no, I don't want to do it and that's fine, but you also limit your choice of properties on the market. You've got to be aware of that. If you want a ready to move in property, there is less, less of them. Secondly, some, somebody else has done the renovation and will take the margin on it. So if you want to do it yourself, you can do it. Can we do it? Yes. Um, we, we love to do it. We are very good at seeing the potential in properties in terms of what can you do with it? How can you make it beautiful and, and how you can make it a home, not just an apartment? Uh, or how you can make it a good investment, a good rental apartment? And we have clients where we just help them with the upfront planning. So getting the budgets from the construction companies, making sure nothing is missing because all the construction companies, they, they forget some, some items because they want to have a lower, lower total budget and you, you want they want you to give them the work. So we make sure that everything is, is included. Um, we give ideas for layout, uh, we, we draw plans and so on. And then either the customer, the buyer manages it on his own as Giuseppe did for instance in Guinardo, or we run it entirely as we're doing for Bart, who's a Belgian investor, uh, who hasn't even seen the property yet. He bought it during COVID and we're renovating it now. So we can do a little bit, nothing, or really everything. That's that's really up to what you feel comfortable with. Um, I think to give you an idea, let me let me just share my screen again for a second. This is an example of I don't know how well you can see this on on the screen now, but this is an, an example of a project in Pueblo Sec, we're currently renovating. Ugly picture on the left, very small living area. And then we removed the wall here in the middle, two large windows, nearly nearly from floor to ceiling, uh, a lot of light, balconies on two, and this, this will become like the bride's uh, living room. The same, a small bedroom becomes now a nice bathroom. This is all work in progress, but that's what we do. Uh, the, the planning of it, the execution of it. And this left picture here, bottom left picture here, this gives you an idea. Um, I mean, we, we said the market is not not regulated, but it's also not professionalized. The, 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 sell, the, 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 the people who sell probably, it's not a very professionalized sector. Um, how, how, how do you dare to, to put pictures of such a property on, on, on listing sites? I mean, you would never do this. This is this is ugly. It was also dirty, and people do it. Right? They they try. They do minimum effort and try to get a sales done. Try to get your signature. There's other examples here where there's again here a, a living room with a wall here on the left. We remove the wall and suddenly become a living room with two, with two up, with two um, two windows, an entrance, an access to a to a little to a little terrace. Um, something in the Champla, very large apartment. Uh, or 100 square meter, uh, very beautiful old times, can restore it. So I'm just saying, don't be afraid of it, um, but make sure you're you're properly accompanied when you plan for it. That, that's the, that's the, 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 I think the core of the success. Uh, proper upfront planning. Planning means the budget, means the timings, and means what materials do you want to use? What type of property do you want to create a mood board, look and feel? Because once, 
people start to work in your apartment to renovate it, if you don't know in week two what kitchen you want and what bathroom finishes you want, you need to order these things, right? And the, the workers, they will they, they will be waiting. And what do we do? They go to another another job. They go to another customer. And then it's very hard to get them back. And that's when the delays start, but when, when coordination problems start. So um, be be mindful of that part. Again, there's lot, lot, lots of examples on, uh, on our Facebook and, and videos as well of befores and afters and so on. Have a look. Okay, and then we had um, what else? Keep renting or buying. As uh, good other topic. On that topic as well, for those people, if you're renting today and you want to buy, there's a lot of our customers today who are in this position. Um, and again, that's property prices dropped, interest rate is very low, so it becomes attractive. In episode three, the previous webinar on the on the block available for free, um, I, I make proper comparisons of it. It's very likely if you're looking for a standard apartment, one, two, three bedrooms, nothing too fancy, nothing, nothing crazily expensive, it's very likely that your monthly payback of the mortgage will be lower or maybe equal than what you're paying as a rent today. Mm -hmm. We see examples where people who are, who are renting an apartment in Borne for 1300 a month, um, they, they, they bought a property in, okay, not, not in the same street, not in the same area, you need to be a bit flexible to, to and also look at what you want in terms of lifestyle, but they pay then uh, 800 in terms of mortgage, but they have a own property and um, I think if you, if you have some savings, so wait, wait, one step back. If you're renting and you're thinking of buying, there's a few conditions. One, you need a minimum amount of savings. A minimum amount means at least 40, 45,000 euro of savings. Otherwise, no bank will finance um, a purchase mm -hmm. because you also need to have a little bit of a buffer always. If you have 50, 60,000 or 70, 80, 90 um, and stable income, so you have a job and you have an income or you can prove income from other sources, um, the banks are very happy to finance at very good conditions, fixed interest rate for 20, 30 years with very interesting conditions and, and therefore a fairly a lower than ever, um, sorry, monthly payback for your mortgage. Consider it, it is an opportunity to buy today because the properties are discounted, they won't stay discounted forever. So I think you have a window of, of six months for sure. I think probably all of 2021 is, is, a, is a good year to, to, to do that, but there's big opportunities now on, on, the, on the market. One thing that, that people often, when you think they are rent or do I buy, they say, and I did this now a little bit on purpose myself, you say, I pay rent of 800 and my mortgage is gonna be 900. So only for hundred more, I'm an owner. That's a wrong comparison. Um, <laughs> You compare the numbers, but you have a property. Okay, so the cost, in the, the difference you need to look at is what is the cost of your mortgage, hmm? the monthly cost of your mortgage. What is that, and how does that compare to your rent? Hmm? That is the correct way to look at it. Of course, you can add some small costs. That okay, there we use Excel models for that, but um, it's it's not just what is my mortgage uh, monthly payback versus the rent. That, that that's incorrect because. Um, uh, you own a property in the meanwhile. Okay. Um, then we had people asking for investments better in a city or at the coast. Very interesting question. Um, everyone has a different opinion on that, I think. And you will, you will always find people who say, I have, I have something at the coast and it's a fantastic investment. And uh, when people talk about investments, first thing of all, um, take it with some caution what I say. A lot of people are very proud and they say, I make 12% of my investments. I mean, I wanna see that first of all. Let, let's see how they calculate that, how they come to these numbers. Because when you ask a few questions and you say, okay, but and that and that cost, and then and, and you think about that and uh, yeah, okay. But so um, there's one story, the story they tell at the bar to their friends about their investments. There's another story that we see in the office about what is actually happening in, in, in reality. For me, for, what makes a good investment? Um, first of all, the investment, you, you make it at when you buy the property. The purchase price needs to be the absolutely best purchase price because if you pay too much, it will impact uh, the ROI for, for investment, obviously. 
um, but that you can get a good price on the coast and, and in cities. From my point of view, for an investment, you want to reduce your risk, keep the risk as low as possible. What, is it, what, what do I mean? Um, what is risk as an investment? It means if you don't get, if you don't find a tenant or you have a tenant who leaves and don't find another one quickly, then your uh, uh, occupancy rate goes down and you've lower annual income, lower return on your investment. Mm -hmm. um, you need also to invest in a market where you need to buy with a long-term perspective, at least medium term, at least four or five years. But preferably, I think a lot of people today, we see them buy as, with lo need to buy in a good market that can, that can where properties can uh, have price increases in the future and, and, and so on. It's very easy to buy a property in a bad area, make it wrong because it's a cheap property and you have a diff difficult type of tenants, a lot of problems. And so we talked about the, the risk of uh, to, to, to have high, uh, high uh, occupancy rate, very important. Um, but, but also, um, I, I lost what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> uh, high occupancy rate, uh, yeah. No, uh, apologies for this. I, I, was, I was distracted by something that popped up, popped up on the screen here. Yes. Um, you also have to think about how do I maximize, of course, the, the, the total number, not just by how many months do I rent it per month, but um, how much is my monthly rent? And to buy in a market where rental prices can go up in the future, which is good for you as an investor, you need demand. You need demand uh, on the rental market. Now, and not too much variation or seasonability in demand. I'm a big believer of investments in cities because you need a lot of demand and you need international demand on, a, on the rental market to have a market where prices of rent can go up in the long term. Just a local market will have pretty boring rental prices over time. And you see that in Spain in, in, in different cities. Um, you have that in Barcelona, for instance. Uh, uh, you have it to an extent in the tier two uh, cities like Valencia, Alicante, there is some, Malaga maybe. Okay, but it's not the same as Barcelona. Where does the amount demand come from, from international, international tenants? If it's only tourist, tourism demand, then there's a risk. You see now what happens with, with Airbnb. You need, you need economy, you need business in, in places where you invest. You need employment. And that drives you basically to the big cities then. Mm -hmm or the, the, the top the top tier cities of, of, of Spain. If you don't have that, there is a risk that, that you don't get it rented that quickly, you might have lower rental prices, not that good potential in the long term. On the coast, very high seasonability, it's, it's great. And the stories every owner on the coast will tell is that he rented apartment for 4,000 a month in July and in August, okay, fine. But then it's maybe empty, and what if it's empty? Who does the maintenance, etc. Et okay, so I got a preference for city apartments with low maintenance in a good part of the um, in a good part of the of the city with long with a long term view, uh, less seasonability, uh, more predictable future incomes, um, potentially higher rental incomes as well, not just more, but also higher. Uh, and a higher occupancy rate. That is, that is for me very important as uh, as an investor. Maximizing returns, minimizing the risks. Okay, you can do. You can of course say, yeah, but what about properties with a tourist license at the coast? True, um, but you got to manage them. Management has a cost, a cost which is easily 20, 30 percent of your income. Uh, so that that brings down your ROI significantly, and you will worry a lot more when you when you when you do Airbnb or or similar. Um, certainly, if it's not near to where you're living, because will, you will you will need someone for everything. Mm -hmm. So that's my view on city or or coast. The next one in row was real estate or stock markets. And conscious of time, what I will do is I'm just going to share one slide because we did a comparison. Um, you see my screen now. It's, it's, it's small to read, but I think the, it's, it's, it's visual enough to understand what it is. This is comparing the property market in Catalonia with the EBEX 35, the reference stock index for Spain, and government bonds on, on 10 years. The line that goes like this is the EBEX 35. The time frame here is 2004 through to 
third quarter this year. Very, very, very up to date, up to date data. Th that's volatility. What you see in here. That's volatility. That's also unpredictability. Mm -hmm. um, if you in the stock market, you can make a higher return. Yes, if things go exactly in the right direction, uh -huh. but the risk is a lot higher. And you, there's no single investment product where you can have can have higher returns without having a higher risk. That is just a reality. The property market, it's a, it's a gray line here. It's it's a, it's a bit hard to see, but it's it's fairly stable um, across this uh, last 16 years or whatever it is. Um, not that not that impacted by 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 the economy or by by, the, by what's happening in in, in the world. Uh, stock markets too are very very unpredictable. It's the risk re return. You want a higher risk? You need to assume a higher. You, you want a higher return? You need to assume a higher risk. That's the, that's the only way it can it can work. And everyone wants to buy on the stock market at the lowest possible price ever and sell at the highest possible price ever. If you draw the, the graph of a certain uh, certain stock not many people buy at the lowest point and sell at the highest point because there is emotion there's, there's stress involved there's worries involved there's the aha moment i should sell now so it's not easy to 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 maximize your returns there property is well, in, in spanish they call it uh, an, an um, activo refugio like it's it's a safe uh, safe investment uh, for for your savings. And today as well, we see people who buy properties, maybe were three, four years ago, they were very focused on, do I get 3.4 or 4.6 or 5 to 2% ROI, depending on how you calculate it, because everyone, uh, it's not a debate. Um, people are more interested today, and I want, I want to buy something secure. Property, bricks in a good part of the city, which I can rent out, maybe long-term, maybe monthly to, to the international um, visitors. It's fine, but the money is there. It's safe. If necessary, I, I can use it myself. Maybe my kids can use it in the future, or my kids, if if we don't live in Barcelona, I can come here to study, etc. So there's a lot of other advantages as well. Um, uh, that's that one. Quickly, the next one: um, existing property or an off-plan purchase. Off-plan means a new development. You you buy something that's when you buy an off-plan project, you see a plan. You see a plan and maybe some work's going on. It happens a lot on the coasts. Not much in Barcelona, Barcelona because there's no free land available. Um, things have changed here. We, when I talk to the large developers in, in Spain, um, end of last year, some of them were getting starting to get September last year. Some of them, mainly in the south, uh, Andalusia and so, and so on, we're getting nervous, like I said, our lead times are increasing. We don't sell the property that quickly anymore. And they have massive financing behind these, these projects. At that time, as I, I said that in some webinars and seminars, seminars at the time, not webinars, um, I think property prices will start to go down slightly uh, in, in that part of Spain. We've seen that happen over the last uh, year. Now the problem with COVID is a lot of these construction companies, the prom promotores, promoters, um, have a massive financial stress. They, they have, they have, the, the, the money is fine, the, the investments are, the, the building works are financed, they need to pay the bank back, um, and they don't sell the properties expected because international people buy these properties, they can't travel from the UK or from the US or from anywhere in the world. Uh, so lead times are increasing again, they need to drop property prices. Some, in, some of these construction companies will disappear. I had conversations with some who said they sell now unfinished. This, this started actually before COVID. We saw, we saw in some parts of Spain, in south, very south, not yet on the Costa Brava or Costa Blanca, we saw developers selling unfinished projects. So projects where there is maybe 20 units ready, the other 20 are work in progress, and the other 20, it's still there's still an uh, uh, gar garbage on that part of the of the of the land because they've not started yet. They're selling a project as such to other investors. That, that's concerning. Some will go bankrupt. Will have financial problems. Don't buy off-plan properties in Spain today in a very early stage. If they present you a plan and say we we start building this year, next year, you, we deliver it in two years from now, in three years from now, I, I wouldn't buy it. The risk is just too high today, uh, and I don't think you'll get a big discount. And they, they're, they're not offering big discounts yet on these properties. So if you buy in a late stage, so ready or nearly ready, 
I think then the risk is quite controlled. We've done this for, for several people who buy, for instance, on the Costa Blanca, where they need another three, four months of work to finish everything. Um, and then our architects, they follow up the work there. They go there every X number of weeks to check it out, to, to write a report for the buyer who lives in another country. Uh, so you know exactly before you make a next payment that we have checked it and you, you, you've got a guarantee uh, that things are good. Um, so that's that's my um, recommendation on that part. One more thing on off plan or, or existing. On existing, you can negotiate better if the if the seller wants to sell, of course, if he has an urgency to sell. Uh, on new developments, it's very very difficult to find to get big discounts today. Although I think they, some will come, but it, it's going to be more complicated. So let, let's have a look at the questions and for my screen, I think you don't see them. Um, I start at the top. Are structural construction inspections typically permitted? Um, I'm not sure in which context, Diana, you're asking the question. Um, if you talk about an apartment here or, um, but yes, we when we buy a property which is not ready, and where work is required, we send in our technical team, architects, and they, they check out the property. If it's new developments, the same applies, but you need to agree with the seller and they typically have a committee of, of architects or a building committee, and you need to get approval to get in and, and so on, but we, we normally get in, yes. Um, next one is, do you help foreigners perform targeted searches for, for properties in and outside the personal area? Yes. Um, big part of what we do we've, we've got two types of of um, uh, customers people who come to us and say i've seen a property and i want to buy it or i'm searching and i know what i want and i like to search i, I enjoy that part um, help me evaluate the right property help me buy it the legal part due diligence the, the negotiation the architects the notary the, the contracts everything that's fine in that case the, the the buyer is leading the search and we coach him we discuss all the properties or the best properties he or she sees to help decide before you say yes i want this other um, customers say well i'd actually prefer you inspire to search a property for me, to screen the market for me. And what we do then is um, kick off workshops. We listen very well. We need to understand exactly what you have in your mind. How is your lifestyle? What do you want to buy the property for or, or, or as an investment if it's not for you? Which areas do we recommend? What do you like? Um, what property features? How big, how beautiful, how modern? Uh, do we renovate it or not, etc. cetera? Um, and we, we bring it all together and we build realistic expectations if we believe that what you want is realistic we commit and we search for you if we think it's not realistic we will discuss try to get to balance realistic expectations otherwise we we, we don't commit because if, if we commit we need to make sure we can find what you're looking for otherwise we lose a lot of time and money on our end and we have to give you a bad message in two months and we, we don't want to do that so yeah we do that and then basically you save 90 plus percent of your time because you only go and see the properties that pass our filters properties that we also pre-visit so we've seen them before you get our pictures our videos not the sales pictures you get real real stuff uh, and we help you decide so yeah do that next one tourist license how is it nowadays priced into properties worth paying more any predictions how this will change in the future tourist license if we speak about barcelona uh, there's a cap on it, so that you can't get any new license anymore since a few, since several years, um, which means a license has a certain value because they're uh, they're limited. Uh, the problem today, which which is a temporary situation, which will improve, is that we don't have tourists because of travel restrictions. Uh, but yes, you pay more for tourist license. It's logic you pay more for it because you buy a business you can run, you can rent a property. Uh, officially um, and so you you pay more how much you pay more depends on the property easily 30,000 40 50 60,000 is is very common but again it depends on on the numbers it there's a lot more work to be done in a due diligence when you evaluate such a property than you buy an, an average property okay you need to look at at uh, the performance in the past with property but also uh, you can buy a property and if there is problems between the owner of, of, the, of the tourist property and the community of the neighbors, et cetera. If they have to complain, they've called the police in the past, et cetera, there's problems. You, they might lose that license. 
So you got to be you to be careful that it's a clean property that there is no issues around it, no complaints and so on. Because otherwise you might buy it and maybe have a problem very very af soon after after buying it. So caution, caution with with that part. In the future, how this will change in the future? Um, the I think they will remain, they remain very valuable, very valuable because what, what some people have done now, because there's no travelers since March, owners of tourist apartments, they have put these apartments on the long-term rental markets because they wanted income. The long-term rental market means five-year contracts, okay? So these properties are off the tourist segment now. It means there's less, less tourist apartments available uh, when tourism comes back. Uh, if there's less, if there is more demand, and I think more people will travel and want an apartment versus a hotel because of everything what's happening now. Um, so you should be in a good position, I think. But again, evaluate it carefully. We've got a lot of experience with tourist apartments, both in buying, evaluating, but also in managing them. So happy to have a separate discussion. And non-tourist rental properties, do you need some license to rent longer to rent longer term tenants, did I miss it? What is the answer to buying with? Okay, so that, that's one particular question. non tourist rental properties, do you need license? Uh, not sure how, if I get it correctly, the question is very simple. There's three models in Spain, tourist rentals, which is you need a license for it, in, in Barcelona at least. Um, don't do it without a license. It's rentals up to one month, 31 days. Hmm specific legislation long-term rentals everything more than one year auto legislation applies everything what's in the middle between a month and a day and a year minus one day is a bit of a gray area and that's where you rent for three six nine months typically to international people who come over here uh, you don't need a license for that you need special specific contract you need to protect yourself of course um, but as an owner, you have more rights on the property than in the long-term rental market, of course. Okay. Um, what is the answer to buying with cash versus mortgage on selling price, if any? Can you bargain more with cash? Uh, yeah, good question. Um, often, yes. If you have the cash available, it means that for the seller, the risk of a transaction falling through is lower. Uh, there is cases, it shouldn't happen with our clients, we, we, we do the work step by step and we plan everything up front. But people who buy a loan, often they, they see a property, they commit to buy something, and then the bank says, no, we can't give you financing. Um, then you're back to square one as a seller. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what you, what you want to avoid. <clears throat> So if I sell a property and I can choose between a buyer who pays cash versus someone who takes a mortgage, uh, I, I've got more certainty about the deal if I take the, the cash buyer. Now, when we go with our buyers to the, to, the, to the sellers, because we've done the work up front, I know exactly how the financing will work, how much the bank finance, what the, what the lead times are gonna be for the mortgage. So we, we, we were able to say yesterday to a, to, a, to a seller, we commit to sign this week the, uh, today the contract and the 14th of December we are at the notary mm -hmm. because I knew exactly from the director of the bank what the timelines are what is approved what is possible then the impact is is very low on the negotiation potential you have an offering to coordinate the whole renovation for a buyer yes um, the the example we're showing on Instagram which is work in progress huh? you need to have some imagination uh, it's a buyer who bought the property in during the lockdown he saw the opportunity um, an example he, he had cash he still took a mortgage in spain uh, fixed fixed interest rate um, and then he did a, he wanted to, to travel in in september again but that was it wasn't possible then october he wasn't allowed again so we we manage it through zoom entirely through zoom we do weekly reports we are very i come from a consulting background so we we are very clear on, on what, what is has happened, what needs to happen, what decisions need to be taken, the costs and the timings and so on. It works very well. We need to choose the materials, the, 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 the tiles, the finishes. We, we make recommendations on uh, look and feel, type of quality. Uh, you don't see whether there's boxes here with uh, samples of uh, types of wood for bathrooms, for kitchens and so on. Um, you don't need to be here to, to see that if you're in Barcelona or around. 
logically we shall meet in person and you decide together with us or you go to a shop where we say look at these and these products uh, we can perfectly manage it uh, from from start to end uh, including once the renovation is finished decorating it getting it furnished um, in function of what you need if it's a rental property we know exactly what you need in terms of quality in terms of in terms of uh, furniture uh, and I'll, I'll also think like for the kitchen plates caps we know also how much these things cost so that it's a uh, you've got experience with that yeah you can also rent it out later if you if you want to thank you very much this is very helpful have a nice evening and that's not a question uh can one deduct mortgage interest from taxes in spain for either person um, victor good question we got to look at uh, the specific situation of we have here on the call i guess people who are um, not spanish but resident here or or not Spanish, but non-resident here, or not Spanish, but living here, but officially physically resident in other countries. So it's uh, there's, there's no single answer to this. We, we have um, people in the team who are fiscal experts. They look at it case by case. <laughs> of course, if there is opportunities to uh, pay lower taxes, we will inform you about it. It can be on the mortgage interest rate reduction, it can be on getting a bonification on your purchase tax, which is normally 10%, but there's on some conditions we get it on 5%, for, certainly for the younger buyers. So we look into that, into that as well. Uh, <clears throat> what is the average gross ROI on rentals mid-term, long-term? in central barcelona what is circle annual capital appreciation in general barcelona and what are you raising going forward um, there's a lot of questions regarding investing so average gross roi on on rentals uh midterm long term in central barcelona it, it depends on, on what data you take. If you take just average data, uh, it, it's very hard. Data is often incorrect or incomplete, so you've got to be careful how you interpret it. Um, what a lot of investors do is, um, people are used to invest in properties, do it uh, more than once. Uh, they often make a quick and dirty calculation when they visit the property, and they say, what is the monthly rental income from this? Times 12 divided by the purchase price. That's a very rough and incorrect or incomplete uh, comparison, but it gives them a number that they can put in context and they say, I want five, I want this number to be 5%, for instance. Okay, so that's, that's, that's helpful to, that's what a lot of investors want to compare. So the, your net return obviously is then lower, is then in the three, 4% range. Um, today on property, if you, the, the deals we see, you, you can you should be able to get net around three percent sometimes four percent it's again related to the risk as well if if you're ready to assume some higher risk your roi will go up uh if you're ready to buy in maybe parts like rafael you might get a higher, a higher roi if you're ready to buy in parts like um uh, san andreu you might get a higher roi on your on your investment you pay less and you get still a very good rent in a market where there's, there's always rental demand uh, but again, a lot of a lot of investors. Uh, I think there's two types of investors: investors who only care about the money, and investors that say, "I want to buy something that I like." So then it's still an investment, but then there's a lot of other factors. If you need to like the building, the stairs, the neighbors, etc., you will probably pay a bit more for your property, have a bit lower ROI, but sleep a lot better. So both are that we need to balance that in function of your. Of your expectations the big lever to get your roi up is to take a mortgage on it because if you build a proper model with own funds plus financing from the bank and you buy the right property in the right area with, with rental demand you get you get not a gross you get to you get to net returns after costs after taxes uh, that can be above 10 percent double digits that's very very high with a very low risk and if you compare that to any other investment product, that's 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 crazy, uh, very very attractive. Here's the example: if you buy, if you put sixty thousand euro of your savings into a property, and you buy something of let's say two hundred and twenty, two hundred and fifty, um, the return you should compare it to your sixty thousand, because that is what you have for alternative investments. If you put that sixty thousand in in bonds, in stock market, in in a portfolio somewhere need to compare with that return. Uh, 
Now, I don't think you can find, if you can find, let me know, but if you find products that give you such a high return, only putting 60,000 in, leveraging the bank for the other 200,000, um, that is, that's a massive, massive lever. Because um, the bank won't finance you if you want to buy, invest on the stock market, of course. The bank finance you on, on properties. And the reason is because the risk is, is very controlled there. Mm. Histor was the historical cap history annual capital appreciation in, in Barcelona and predictions going forward. Um, again, data, the, the, the market has, has peaked 2008, 2007, dropped over, over six years, bottomed in 2013, dropped about 40%, and then increased um, every year until, until 2017 by five, six, seven percent per year in some years, okay? Then it, fla it flattened again, 2018, 19, um, because of the political situation just to some extent um and now at the moment there's price drops there's discounts i, I said before in the webinar i think barcelona eight ten percent is possible in good areas in in, in the champla in good parts of the, of the city in borne and so on um and going forward don't know price increases next six months probably no increases next 12 months but good opportunities now in the next three to six months because the people who need cash they sell now they, they can't wait um and then in the long term, and that's maybe different, one of the other webinars I talk about, it, we, did, we did a study called Barcelona 2050, but it's 30 years from now, but it's not that far in, in the future. It's, it's when your kids are, 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 are starting their families probably. Uh, long term, really long term, Barcelona is in a fantastic position because of demographic parameters uh, and demand and supply parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't build, build many new properties people will move more and more and, and accelerate it now because of COVID to areas uh, from inland to the coast and from, uh, and from villages to cities and to warmer climates. Now, which city in Europe has international co companies, has sea, has coast, uh, has an affordable lifestyle, has nice properties, is well connected to the rest of Europe? There is not many cities. Huh? I think Barcelona is the, num the only one um that has this this attraction this potential so and at the same time find one piece of free land in the central barcelona you won't find it there is none they can't they, compared to any other european city we think in barcelona they can build in the next 30 years uh about 273,000 new uh, uh units new properties that is very low compared to any other big city in europe but again, the, the, the demographic trend will be a lot more important here than, than the rest, I think. Happy to discuss in more detail, Slavko. Dimitri says, I need to go. Very clear and interesting. All right, thank you for that. Um, let, let's launch a poll. I think we have a quick a few people on the call still. Just like to understand how you, if this is good for you, if this is useful, is this, is this inspirational? Uh, do you learn something in these sessions? Um, if you give us a short rating the, we learn from that 10 being like oh, this is very inspiring i like it um you took a bit of a risk but this webinar to, to tackle different topics in in one session and and we, we knew that uh, but we thought it's the last one of the year so we're going to talk about different uh, different topics so more people want to vote okay thank you for voting uh what do you vote Yes, what he voted. Uh, the major. Oh, thank you. The majority gives us a ten out of ten score, and fifty, seventy-five, uh, and eighty-three. Eighty-three percent gives us an eight, nine, or ten out of uh, ten score. So, appreciate your feedback. Thanks for thanks for sharing this. Um, one more question here I see. What's the historic annual rental increase percentage? And what are your projections going forward? So rental prices have have gone up significantly in the last years in Barcelona. Barcelona became the number the, the most expensive city for uh, for renting in Spain. Um, it's still a number one or two. I'm not sure about the latest data, uh, but it's very, it's very expensive. Rent will go down a bit. The rent is going down a bit. Will still uh, go down a bit further, I think. Um, for, for for many demand and supply reasons, but also because some people, uh, for, for example, autonomous, so freelancers who live in a 2,000 euro per month nice apartment, they see that there's properties now on the market that are not very different 
for a thousand three hundred. So we see such such people change. They say we, we can actually get something which is not that nice, but it's still very good. Um, so they they might change. Um, good. Thanks, Ralph. I've learned some new insights. Good. Thank you for sharing this, Eric. More. More questions. Well, one, one more thought regarding the 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 the, the, the prices, the rental prices, and and, and what, what what is happening here. Uh, there's also something about uh, the rental control in Spain, in Barcelona, and in Catalonia, and, and, and potentially in Spain. Um, nobody knows what's going to happen. It's it's unclear. It, it, it's it's some uncertainty created by the politicians. Um, let's not forget there is a ultra left wing part of the government in Spain. You, you have also very left wing in, in Catalonia, in Barcelona. So they have voted for, for rental control. It's sometimes not good for your rental income. It's sometimes really not not affecting. Uh, it depends on the area, depends on the property, etc. We, we run these, these um, simulations. Um, um, and uh, it, it's unclear what will happen. Probably the other political parties who are against it will go to court and will try to take this this uh, rule out. But of course, Podemos is, is in favor of it. It has been proven economically that it doesn't make any sense. The only thing that will happen if you put the rental control in place is, uh, they, they did it in Berlin, it did it in, it in other parts of the world. You will have right away less supply of rental properties on the market. People will say, ah, if I can't rent it for that much, I don't rent it out. So they take them off the market or people start charging part of the money uh, unofficially, so under the table, they say, "Oh, for this, if you want this property, you'll pay me a bit more." And if there is, if there is demand and less properties on the market, I'm sure people will buy it. Um, people will stop doing proper maintenance of maintenance of their properties because if there's a if there's a control and say you can only get a thousand a month for a certain property and you think it's worth two thousand three hundred, then probably you will care a bit less about good maintenance. These kind of things. Um, but the main thing that will happen is that you will have it's a very populistic populist messaging from, from the political parties to make people think that they will find properties at a lower price on the rental market. And that's not true. Only a few people will find it and they will create a massive group of unsatisfied and disappointed people who won't find the properties. Just draw a demand on a supply curve if for the economists under you on paper. And then you put a horizontal line and a, a, a maximum price and you will see the gap widens. There's no equilibrium anymore in the market and uh, there's more people who want to rent and there's less people who offer apartments at that price okay one more question came in do you have a price range for a property search uh, what do you mean Rosalind um, the price range in terms of property prices so let, let, let's let me try and answer it please feel to feel free to write down if you want to to, to specify um, for property searches for us, the I think not not really. We have, as I said before, a lot of more and more younger buyers. Uh, they start looking at properties around 160, 170 thousand euro. We accompany them. There's also people who say, "I want something really luxury lifestyle, a, a million plus." Um, but the majority of our buyers are in that. 200 to 500,000 euro price range, which is what a lot of people can afford with their own savings plus a, a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Okay, you say your your service. Uh, so obviously, when we run the search for our buyers, when we accompany the buyers, they, we are paid by the buyer. We will be paid by yourself because we defend your interest and, and make sure that before you sign anything, everything is clear and they can tick all the boxes. Uh, the, the fees are very are different depending on what you would like us to uh, to help you with. Um, the, the simplest example is probably someone said, uh, someone was in real estate, but not in Spain. He said, I've got everything. I, I just want your help with the negotiation. Okay, that, that is a very specific task we can do. It's not standard. We don't do that. Um, and the other extreme is people say, help me get the best mortgages. Help me search the properties. Um, help me screen them, help me evaluate them, uh, visit them with me, <laughs> the, the, the legal checks, the technical checks, the architect goes and see it, plans for the renovation, the contracts go to notary, translation into English. It can be from something very small to, to very big. 
You've got two standard packs. One is a full pack, including the search. The other was what we call the buyer safety pack, which is where you lead the search and we accompany, we coach you, we guide you uh, through that search. So we're never alone um, on, on the market. And we deal with, all, in, in both cases, we deal with everyone involved. So all the difficult conversations with agencies, pushy agencies or non-responsive banks, we, we take care of it, we push them, we get, uh, we resolve the problems there for you. Thank you very much, Raf. Very good information. Thank you for your time. I have to leave. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. So th thanks for your comments. I see some some positive comments and thank you messages. I don't, I'm not sure if you see them. Um, thanks everyone for attending. What I would like to say is, um, if you have specific property plans in mind, you want to buy, you want to maybe not sell on the, on this call, but what? Uh, invest uh, of your senior property you're not sure uh, don't be shy share share your your story send me just an email to raf at inspireapartments.com and uh, we we discuss them it's for barcelona for the rest of catalonia for the rest for not all of spain but certainly the coastal parts of parts of the coast of spain we we cover uh, feel free to reach out the first thing I will ask you when you when you reach out to us is tell me a bit more. I will listen. That's my first step. Understand your plans. Why do you want to buy? And then understand what, where, your budget. You need to understand these things. And then you get my opinion on feasibility. What do I think? Is this a good plan? Is this feasible? Uh, or should you maybe adjust some parameters like property features or areas to look at or, or, or maybe think about financing? That, that's how the typical initial conversation looks like and we can of course explain how we can how we can help you got the resources here you will get a follow-up email as well where we share these links so you can uh, read more or watch more uh, in function of your preferences and then if no other questions i would say a very big thank you to stay on for uh, half an hour more i hope that's a sign that you liked it and success with your property plans in spain uh, it's a difficult market, but you you will you won't regret it. It's a good, it's a fantastic place to buy a property. You won't regret it, um, and if you do it properly, I think uh, you can make a in the next month very good next six months or so very good purchases um, that you won't see probably again in the future. Thank you very much.